One thing that the demonic powers that have infiltrated our society does not want is a strong family. They don't want a strong family. They don't want a husband who loves their wives as Christ has loved the church, a sacrificial love. You know, they don't want a, a wife to love just being a mother. You know, matter of fact, they've kind of split it up, and so both parents have to work now. Just make sure they do everything they can to destroy that union, that one fellowship. And that is ordained by God. There's no other marriage that ordained by God. I don't care what the laws say. You're, if you're married to a woman and you're a woman, or if you're a man married to a man, you know, that is fornication, you're going to hell. There's no repentance if you just keep on that lifestyle. You have to repent, chant, take that lifestyle, and if you say you're born gay, well, then you have no other option but not to have any sex. If that's what you say, that's a lie that you're giving in to the devil because no one's born gay. We're male and female, and for this reason, we will become one flesh, that a man will go leave his father and mother's house and take unto him his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. They should become one have children. Now, also, he is the spiritual leader of the household because the Bible says, you know, his, your desire is talking to Eve, talking to the woman. Your desire is going to be unto your husband and he shall rule over you. That doesn't mean suppress her. That means he has to make a sanctuary and provide for her as a faithful ruler would, who's not demonic and all impressed by power and money and wealth. But we are called to be priests and kings, every one of us. We're supposed to reign on earth. That's what we're called to do. This is our garden. Your wife, your children, your home is your garden to protect and take care of if you're a man. And she desires to be to use the support mechanism, the support rib. But you're supposed to love her as your man to love her as Christ has loved the church. Sacrificial love for her first, for God first, her second, family third. That's what we're called to do. But you see, that's strength, that's power. So that's why they don't, they want to make sure that their, that family that's ordained by God will never exist again. So to ensure it, Let's go rob the children of any godliness, any kind of identity they have that can have possibly God. Because for power, the communist agenda to have one world order that our government is actually the leader of, they have to get rid of this truth because there's power in this truth. Now you say that there was a separation between church and state. That's a lie. Jesus did not separate church and state. Oh, yes, he did. They were Roman. No. The local government was the scribes and Pharisees. They were in cahoots. It was like the Roman government was like their federal government. The state was a Jewish state inside. That's why when Jesus said, you should know the truth, the truth will set you free, these scribes and Pharisees says, hey, we're in bondage to no one. As long as they collected taxes, for the government and kept the people in control, the Roman government gave them that authority. So Jesus did. It's like every church should be going to their state, government, legislation offices and says, no, every church should be raising up. No, it's marriage is only between a man and a woman. No, there's gonna be no more abortion. We're fighting against abortion. Oh, we just separate church and state. No, Jesus did not. Jesus did not separate church and state. He did not. In Washington State, a 13-year-old cannot legally get a tattoo without parents' permission. But if that 13-year-old decides, I want a transgender, the state will take that child and has a facility for that child. The 
so the state is taking over our children right from kindergarten all the way through high school confusing who they are getting them far away from God as possible so our sins will enslave us the Hebrew word for disciple is Talmit which means an apprentice our Lord God Jesus Christ was Talmit to his dad Joseph when Joseph says son this is how we're gonna build this home we're gonna take this cornerstone here's the design of the home we're gonna do everything you're gonna you're gonna be my apprentice I'm gonna show you how to build this house now we are Talmit we are apprentice of the Lord Jesus Christ Jesus says the things I do you shall also do and greater things shall you do if you abide in me and my word abides in you, to ask what you will and it shall be done to you. Hereby is my Father glorified. So shall you be my disciples. We deny the power, just like Paul wrote about when he says in 1 Timothy 1 4, the Spirit, this is God, this is God Himself, the Spirit, capital S, the Spirit says in later days, at the last times, the last days, People will be turned away from the faith. They'll be having itchy ears. They'll be giving heed to de demonic spirits. Making salvation by themselves. Like it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3. The lovers of selves, proud, boastful, covenants. Having a form of godliness but denying this power. This is what the Lord said to me. I do not know a pastor who's not in danger of hell's fire because they're not. And so I have to pray that they see a need to repent. And how you know them? They're not teaching about repentance, about giving our lives totally to God, surrendering our lives totally to God. The things, everything that's in this world is opposite of God. Everything. First John says, if you love the things of the world, the, the love of the Father is not in you. The world says, listen, you're talented, you can use your talent. The, Lord, the Bible says, listen, I'm not going to use the things that you're gifted in or you'll glorify in yourself. The world says, go ahead and just take it. You know, if it's yours, grab it. Grab all you can, live for it today. The Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. You, you've got to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. The word says, be confident in yourself. The word says to be poor in spirit and have your confidence only in me. Surrender. Live for today. Have a blessed life. God wants you to have all these riches. Jesus says, woe to those who are rich. The son of man has no place to lay his head. Foxes have holes and birds in the air have nests. But the son of man has no place to lay his head. The word says just live. Live and grab what you can. God wants to bless you. Paul says be like me as I am like Christ. I suffer all those things because I count everything in this world as dung so I can live the glory of Christ. Ah! The world says this is it. You can grab, be prosperous, be prosperous. The word says, we don't live for this age. We live for the age to come. See, everything is different. Everything is opposite. Everything. God's calling us to walk like Enoch walked with him. He separated himself from this world. He didn't love the things of the world. When everyone was running to the big city of Cain built, you know, and they were partying and they were making musical instruments and they were doing, they were living for today, enjoying, and they were saying, well, God gave us all this. God blessed us with all this. Enoch was just praising, walking with God. Didn't want his fellowship with the world at all. And God translated him, sent him up raptured him that's what we call it today less than half of one percent less than half of one percent if Jesus comes back today we'll go with him we'll be raptured up
Less than half of 1%, that's what the Lord told me. Why? Because we made salvation about ourselves. It's a control and manipulating spirit that's in the church today, where you work, you're always learning, but never coming to the knowledge of truth, never walking right with Jesus, never surrendering our whole lives, not willing to suffer for His sake. Just want to live for today. That prosperity preaching that a lot of people, you know, wisely reject, like from the Joel Osteens or, the, or, the, or those people right there, that spirit is in every church i ever been into. They can't see it, but it's living for today. It's, it's being in, saying you are God, but being in agreement and walking alongside the world. But if you're called into the kingdom of light, now you found your way into the broad way of destruction. You're not no longer condemned, but few will go through the straight and narrow gate and end up in the kingdom of heaven. Few. So, and so if you were called and you think you're a Christian and you, you think you have the Holy Spirit and you want to live for the Lord and you're going to your church and you're faithful to your church, you're a disciple of your church, right? but yet you still can walk in the world, you can still do the things of the world and not be convicted when you go into your church that, you know, hey, you, you watch just as much TV, you're not out there preaching the word, you're not laying your life down, you haven't sacrificed your lives totally to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you don't feel convicted to do so, leave that church, leave it. So basically, you're gonna try to find other few people that wanna just totally surrender their lives, lay down their lives, willing to suffer for the word, willing to suffer your life so that child can be saved, willing to do anything for salvation to go through your neighborhood, your city streets. That's what righteousness means again. Tesaha means to bring forth righteousness for those who are in need. So not only to meet material needs, that's really secondary, but their spiritual needs is a, it's, it's a must. It's, 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 if you can claim to be righteous, but yet you're not going out to meet the needs of the people, that, which is the salvation of their soul. Not only, salvation means not only we delivered from this present age, but now we have a chance to go through that straight and narrow gate. That's what it means. Broad is the way to destruction. The world's condemned already. But pride, living for ourselves, coming lover to ourselves, just want to make it to heaven. I just want to be along with my church. I, I see my, my pastor and I know there's sin in him, you know, but hey, that makes me feel, you know, good because I really don't want to be free from sin. I kind of want both worlds. I kind of want to, you know, watch my TV and watch my shows and go to my movies and and really be a, a sports fan and all that stuff when everybody else is falling in hell and not being convicted that I have to repent of these things and be ready and available to be used by God seven days a week, 24 hours a day, laying my life down to the Lord. I got to rebuke all carnality so I'm ready. When the Lord calls and sends me, I'm ready to go. If I don't know what to do, I know I can just take my Bible on the streets and just read it because salvation is about them. If you're truly saved, it's not about you anymore. It's about them. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So you call yourself born again? Jesus said in John 6, no one can come to me, now as the Father in heaven, draw them. So, if you're going to your church and everything, you've been drawn from your mother's womb. You've been predestined, either 
to be destroyed or be one of the few that can make it through the straight and narrow gates. Blessed are you when men shall revel you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. This is Jesus talking. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You, you understand? You understand? If you're born again, you are his modern day prophet. We got the word. We can tell people what's about to come. But it takes faith. The Hebrew word for faith is emuna, which means to act with firmness. Emuna. So you say you are the faith. We must act with firmness. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you forever, for always. I'm always going to be with you. I will never leave you and forsake you. Lay your life down to me. I empower you and you can make change.